exactly the spat, the spat t-shirt. Guys, welcome back to another video here from the off grid from the off grid garage in in Australia. Uh, let me switch the camera. And before we get started with today's very interesting test, um, I want to give you a little bit of a media pick before we start this video here. I have received an email from from uh, Finland. He sent me. Ah, I just realized I probably shouldn't have said his name. Well, we all know him under his name Up North and Personal. He is a very valued member here on the channel as well as on Will's Do It Yourself Solar Forum. He's writing lots of articles over there, testing a lot of things and sharing all these results in great articles. So anyway, Ben has sent me this email. Ah, I just said it again. He sent me this email and said, you may be interested in reading my blog about building a solar system for my brand new off-grid house here in Finland. A blog. This is like a written text with photos. A blog in 2022. I mean, in the time of TikTok, YouTube shorts, people have no freaking time to sit down and read an article. So I said to myself, well, okay, then sit down and read a blog. I haven't read a blog for... I can't even remember the last one I read. So I started reading his first blog about building a sustainable off-grid house in freezing cold Finland. I mean, this is, this is the exact opposite from here, right? This is exactly... And, well, I kept reading. Reading about his initial idea to build a sustainable off-grid house in Finland using local materials like wooden logs instead of bricks, which would need to be imported into Finland from another country. The whole sustainability of this project is a key factor. The red thread through all the blog articles he is writing. So he is explaining where to get the water from, what to do with the wastewater. Energy, like water, is key. The orientation of the house and location of the windows is very important and he ran all kind of simulations with that. I mean, look at this house. It is like a castle. It is incredible. So yeah, where's the energy coming from in wintertime when uh, solar is not really an option? So from the initial energy audit he did, over the selection and purchase of 500 watts solar panels. Yes, one panel has 500 watts, up to the sizing and selection of the battery. And he also shares his thoughts about why he hasn't chosen a ready-built battery, but instead used single cells and built his own. Man, you need to clean up these balance leads. These days, we have split loom tubing and Velcro. Yeah, anyway, this was my first blog reading for a very long time. And I must say, I found this really enjoyable to follow him along. And I just wanted to share this with you as well. So if you are interested in all kind of sustainable living, building a house in the middle of Finland and how solar and battery systems work up there, I leave the link to his blog post down below under the video. So thank you again for sharing this with us. Oops. And guys, another positive story. You may remember back in December, I had a little bit of a raffle here, a draw, a giveaway for the knee active smart balancer, right? And one of my viewers, what's his name? And one of my viewers, Dennis, won the actual knee smart balancer. Ah, Dennis M, Andy, I really need the balancer. Little Carla defrauded me and sent us used cells, heavily mismatched and used. Well, I guess this balancer will go to you. Please get in contact with me, send me an email with your details and I will send this device to your address. 
Well, Dennis lives in India. So I wasn't quite sure if I can send anything from here to India because of all the restrictions with COVID. And it was just not clear if this is possible. So I went to the local post office and said, well, I've got this little electronic here, which I need to send to India. And the guy said, well, no problem. We've got planes going from here to India, delivering mails and picking up stuff from there. So shouldn't be an issue. So I sent off the knee smart balancer in a little parcel on the 11th of January. And yesterday I received a message from Dennis and he said, well, you won't believe it. It has arrived with your letter. I connected it all to my battery and it is working. It is balancing my stupid B grade, C grade cells. He had so much trouble with because obviously it is still a problem in India to get decent battery cells. And if you order them on AliExpress and they send you B or C grade batteries, you cannot do much about it. Well, and he also included a picture of his free range chickens over there in India. So it took around two and a half months here from sunny, hot Australia to even sunnier, hotter East India. I could follow the tracking along, but for the last three weeks, it said, well, it has arrived in India and that was it. I couldn't see anything any further. But it has worked out. He's got his knee active balancer. I'm super happy for him and I'm really glad it has arrived now. So yeah, I'm sure we will do a giveaway very soon again here on the channel. So stay tuned for that. And thank you again, Dennis, for sending over these photos. Okay, I guess um, we should start with the video now. Yeah, as you have already seen in the intro here, we now have all these sort of bus bars here. And well, I really don't know which one I should use. And I really would like to test them all in regards to the current capacity, also creation of heat and of course internal resistance. How good are these bus bars actually connecting to the standard default aluminium, aluminium terminals of the EV battery cells? All right, here, finally I found a place where there's no reflection on the display. Okay, uh, I just want to measure the internal resistance of all four cells here I have, just to compare this later on when we have mounted the bus bars what the actual difference is. And we measure cell number one from terminal to terminal. And we have 0 0.18 milliohm, 0 0.18 milliohm, 0 0.18, 0 0.18 milliohms. So we will start off with the tint copper bus bar, which comes with the battery cells and use this as our negative link over here. And we torque them all with four Newton meters. So the first link between battery number one and two will be Paul's aluminium bus bars. They are not sanded, they are not treated. This is exactly the way they came to me. Okay, second link between battery number two and three will be one of Maddie's bus bars with four times 10 gauge wire. Then we have this interesting piece of equipment here, which is a copper, a tint copper braided bus bar, which I bought on AliExpress for $5. I just bought one because the reviews were a bit, um, we will test this one out. It is semi flexible. So this apparently has the same dimension as a 50 millimeter cable. Before I continue the video, I will just cover the battery here with this cardboard. Yeah. Size comparison on the Off-Grid Garage YouTube channel. Now you can see the original bus bar here, two millimeters, and this one is four millimeters. The width is exactly the same, and the length is the same as well. And they actually say on the website it has only a hole and not a slot, because, well, it is flexible, right? It is flexible. It should adapt to your battery needs. Wherever your terminals are, it should just connect. I'm a little bit skeptic that you actually can make this fit because yeah, it is, you can bend it like this, but you cannot really push or pull it and make it longer or shorter. You know, you have to bend it in a, in a strange, well, it doesn't really, well, it, it, it is not the same as if you have a long slot in here and you can adjust the bus bar to your needs on the battery cells. So let's see how this one performs. I also noticed they have actually punched the hole in here and you can see how the whole material got sucked into this hole here. It, and on the other side, it peaks out a bit. So I would actually sand this one down. There is a bit of a, of an edge here 
of a sharp corner but I would sand this down with very fine 800 grit paper just to get rid of this but for the moment for the first test we leave it as it is and see how it performs and usually you would have your battery cells close together like this and then put your put your bus bar over it well and this is exactly what someone said in the comments under this bus bar it doesn't fit and it doesn't fit see that it doesn't fit i would need to make it fit like this but it's not really no it is super see while the while the standard bus bar just fits and can be adjusted this is not going to work on your normal battery cells anyway in this case we're using the other of Medi's flexible bus bars this time this one comes with a four gauge wire here and we connect this yeah and this is the problem i had with this bus bar before it is acting like a spring it pushes your cells apart basically Well, and we use the um, flexible bus bar here for our last, for the main positive. I'm just not sure which way around. I think I'll leave the edge to the top. So as you have seen, I have not connected the BMS here. I'm not monitoring single cells because this will be only a test for a few minutes. And I know the batteries are roughly at 70, 80% state of charge. And they all have been balanced before brand new and these are the very good nice eve lf 304 cells 3.2 volts with 304 ampere hours so this whole so this whole 4s system here gives you roughly 3.9 kilowatt hours of capacity so and here's the whole setup again We've got our main positive over here of the battery, have got this flexible bus bar in between and a 400 amp bolt on fuse, which I have connected with both cables here to our three kilowatt Renogy, Renogy inverter. The link is down below. This is, a, this is a very, very good inverter. It also has an AC in signal here, so it can act like a UPS. It, it runs your load from the main grid. If the grid fails, it automatically uses the battery as backup to provide up to a three kilowatt of power to your loads. These are amazing products. Okay, so far the advertising for today. First bus bar here is Medi's flexible four gauge bus bar. Then we have a four times 10 gauge bus bar, same crimp. We have power poles, aluminum bus bars here, no sanding, no paste, nothing. And then we have the standard bus bar here, which comes actually with the EV LF 280 or 304 battery cells. All connections have been torqued down with four newton meters. I used the precharge resistor to precharge the capacitors of our inverter. Uh, I didn't wait long enough, so I got a bit of a spark there. Just a tiny, tiny spark. But it was enough to scare the shit out of me again. And then we want to connect the charging system of the Tesla over here to pull some decent load from this system then. But before we start, let's measure the internal resistance again. Okay, here cell number one was 0 0.18 milliohms from terminal to terminal. And now we've got the bus bars in between. So we measure on top of this bus bar and on top of here. And we have now an internal resistance of 0 0.55 milliohms. Wow. Cell number two was 0 0.18 milliohms as well. On top of here top of there resistance 0 0.74 milliohms and the third battery has an internal resistance of 0 0.19 milliohms but including the bus bars we have now resistance of 0 0.52 milliohms and cell number four was 0 0.18 milliohms and we now have a resistance of 0 0.22 milliohms that is the lowest okay that is that is very surprising that we have added a lot of resistance already just between the terminal and the bus bar connections 
And here we have a quick look through the infrared camera from the top of our battery. We've got a bit of reflection on the aluminium bus bar as usually, so there's no hotspot at the moment. Okay, let's put some load on this battery. So I have now started charging the vehicle again with 5 amps, lowest setting at all. And as we may be able to see here, yeah, we've got already around 77 amps, 80 amps to charge the vehicle. Now this is 12 volt, 80 amps into the inverter. Okay, that's not good enough. 7 amps, I'll go all the way, 8 amps. This will be 160 amps now, going through all these bus bars. Okay, let's leave this running for a while, and then we check temperatures. So, and we are now, well, one minute into the test. <laughs> and I can already see what's going on here with our aluminium bus bar down here. I cannot really touch it over here anymore, it is so hot. The standard bus bar, a bit warm. The 10 gauge wire, a bit warm. The 4 gauge wire, a bit warm. And here, this bus bar, a bit warm, but nothing traumatic. Not sure what's going on here, actually. This might be their bad crimp or something on the cable here. So this is not, this is our fuse in between here. It's heating up. Now, definitely a hotspot here at the connection. This is all torque with four newton meters. But yeah, this is how far we are after one minute. Oh, yeah, this terminal gets really hot and this terminal gets really hot now. Almost untouchable. So 1.8 kilowatts for a few minutes. Hand warm. Oh, yeah, this is super hot. It's not so bad over here, ah, still hot, but this one is super hot. No, that is all right. Yeah, that is a lot hotter than this one. All right, all right. Yeah, this is not even warm here. And this one has the same temperature as the original bus bar, I would say. So they are not too bad. Okay, let's have a look at the overall temperature here through the infrared camera. You can see this cable has definitely a problem up here. It gets super hot, but this is not part of our test actually. We want to see the bus bars. You can see here the flexible bus bar from Ali, cold. This one is a yeah, same temperature. This one heats up a bit here, could be a crimping issue. And this one here is like super hot. Yeah, you can see 50 degrees here on the terminal, untouchable. While the original bus bar stays cool. This is now running for about five minutes. Okay, so far the original bus bar, the very flexible bus bar from Ali, and the 4 gauge wire bus bar here from Medi, all top. This one has a bit of a problem, but it could be a terminal issue here as well. We will see this in a minute. And Paul's bus bar here, woo, get me some eggs. Okay, what I will do now is I stop the test here for a moment and I'm going to send this one down as we have done it in our in the other battery, as well as I will send this one down a bit just to overcome any issues here from this terminal to the actual ring lock. Yeah, we can see cell number three here has 0 0.5. And cell number four is actually the best, and it is the best. This one is cold, this one is cold. Well, cold, hot, cold, super hot, super hot, super cold. And I'm now using my mirror tile here because people said you need to find the smoothest and flattest area you can find to sand these ones down. Well, I guess I found it with a mirror. So we are also putting some no oxide on the bus bar first. 
and then start sanding it down in an eight shape. People say it, so I'm doing everything you're saying. And here we can see again, it has just sanded this corner down. Just this corner, nothing else. A few scratches over here, but just this corner. Wow. Let me take some more paste and wipe it off. Get rid of all the debris. And let me put some paste on to actually protect the just sanded surface. Okay, let's do the other side as well and put it back on the battery. And I just found the problem with Maddie's bus bar here. Well, there was a washer in between the ring lock of the bus bar and the terminal. It must be from a previous test or something and I didn't see it when I put the bus bar on. And this was in between causing the issue, I believe. So I've just talked everything down with four newton meters again and let's continue our test. All right, we are charging again with eight amps, uh, 1.84 kilowatts. You can see 160 amps going out of the battery. And let's see how the aluminum bus bar behaves this time and also Maddie's 10 gauge, four times 10 gauge wire connection here. Yeah, it looks much better. Well, and here you've got the comparison again between the standard bus bar, the tint copper bus bar, which comes with the cells, power ports, aluminum bus bars, and the ones Maddie has crimped and sent me over here, four times 10 gauge, one times four gauge wire, and the AliExpress bus bar here, flexible bus bar, which is working well as well, if it would fit the cells. Oh yeah, I got it, I got it. You can see the display down here reading the resistance and the voltages and what I'm going to do now is I want to measure the voltage drop and resistance across the bus bars. What I'm going to do now is measuring from one set screw to another and take this one as the reference for the voltage drop and resistance of each bus bar. Okay I'm starting with the most negative side of cell number one here. This is the original bus bar which comes with the battery cells okay on top of the set screw here and on the other side we have 1.2 milliohms and 7.2 millivolt okay port super bus bar on top of the set screw and on the other side and we have 1.6 milliohms and 24 millivolt and Maddie's self-made bus bar out of four times 10 gauge wire, 1.6 milliohms and 14 millivolt. And the second bus bar she made with one four gauge wire. Oh, you can't see the display anymore. There you go. Yeah, let's say two millivolt, uh, two milliohms and 17 millivolt. And then we've got the last bus bar, which is the one from AliExpress, the flexible bus bar from AliExpress. Oh, wow. Uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 milliohms and 5 millivolt only. So here with this measurement method, uh, the AliExpress flexible bus bar actually wins. And here again the picture after around one minute of charging the Tesla. You can see the original bus bar on the top right there is actually black. It is cold, metal cold. The flexible bus bar from AliExpress on the top left is cold. The 4 gauge wire down here heats up a tiny, tiny bit. The 4 times 10 gauge wire heats up a little bit. And we can see another hotspot developing here on this cell with Paul's aluminium bus bar. It is still getting warm. It is not as super hot anymore as it was before. It is a lot, a lot better, but it's still warmer than everything else. 
while the aluminium bus bar is still causing a bit of connection issue between the terminals and the bus bar itself, even after sanding it down, putting some paste on, and it's still, it is still the warmest here in the whole picture. And surprisingly, Maddie's bus bar are a fantastic build. So she has done a great job crimping and using the same cable length here for this one. There's not one single cable which gets hotter than the other ones. It's all nicely distributed. And I wasn't actually expecting that they're holding up 160 amps so well. Because these sizes of cables are usually rated for around 80 amps. But double the current now, 160 amps. Big thumbs up, Maddie. You've done well. And the one from AliExpress is nice as well. I would really like to recommend these ones here, but they don't fit your battery cells. So as they come, they are a bit too short to connect two of your cells next to each other. And also they are not, they are not offering any longer ones of these ones here. So you can potentially connect a second row because you have a wider distance in between the terminals then that just come in this specifications and dimensions. But they're also offered in 35 millimeters and 70 millimeters as well. Okay, guys, this is the test for today. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. All your beer donations, of course. Thank you. And until I catch you in the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. So the actual intention of this test was not so much showing which bus bar is better than another one. It was more like testing the current carrying capacity of these different bus bars. And I actually promised Maddie to test her bus bars because I thought they were a little bit too thin. But as we have seen, 160 amps and they don't have any problems at all. And as we have seen with all these bus bars here, it is not so much the material or how they have been made. Your worst enemy is the resistance between your battery terminal and the actual bus bar, regardless what it is. Of course, the aluminium bus bar has some challenges, but the heat we could see in the bus bar is not coming from the actual carrying capacity. It is the resistance between terminal and bus bar itself. And we could also see this very clearly when I miss this little washer here in between one of Maddie's bus bars and the battery terminal. This caused a lot of resistance and therefore heat. And at the end we have seen all these bus bars here are capable of carrying 160 amps for quite some time. But if you decide now to go with a different material or spend an awful lot of time and making your own spending some extra money and buying a flexible bus bar from AliExpress or just stick with a standard copper bus bar coming with the cells. Well, this is a question only you can have the answer for.